prior to understanding this through the Jewish lens. Repentance was kind of like this uh, this pitiful schlub on his knees, peering dolefully up towards heaven with his hands clasped, saying, please forgive me, right? Yeah. Um, which is a form of repentance, right? I, I, That's I, I the... totally validate that. Or uh, the other idea I had was some schmuck out there with the bullhorn saying, repent, repent for the end is it or, you know, that kind of thing that you see with the street right. preachers. It always bothered me that um, Jesus shows up to be baptized because I'm like, here's the one guy who has nothing to be baptized for because he's not guilty of sin. He hasn't committed any and he yeah. never will. But yet he gets baptized and he says, suffer it to be so for now, for it is proper to fulfill all righteousness. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You've already fulfilled all righteousness and you're about to fulfill even more of it. So the, the concept that I found helpful was um, oddly enough this this business book I read a few years ago called Good to Great, right? Okay. And he talked about how uh, you can be running, you can run a good business, or you can run a great business. That's important that you say that because my goal daily is to be more righteous. I I pursue that. I want to mm. pursue that. I want to work towards that because I believe that's what pursuing a godly life is. That's what becoming closer to Torah is. And if I love Torah, if I love God's law, if I love God's standards, the only way I can really show intimacy is to constantly draw nearer to it and ask, is there more I can do here? And I'm not, when I do that, I'm not asking, hey, God, can I impress you? 